This is Joe Brammer from Deco Digital working on Numa Breath of Life, and you're listening to the Rectify Podcast. What is up, everyone? Ty Boy here. Um, welcome to another episode of the Rectify Gaming Podcast. I have Alan Walsh and our special guest, Joe Brammer. Hey, guys. How you doing? Who's a developer on Numa Breath of Life. That's 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 true. Yeah. Numa with a P, though. <laughs> <laughs> no ends. Like, like Numa, Numa A, or pneumonia. Yeah, but... Like that. <laughs> uh. So, guys... What have you guys been playing lately? Playing? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I just bought a PlayStation, actually, so Ooh, this, nice. is, this is the first time in the project where I've had some money, so I actually spent some money, so that's cool. But I, nice. I, I got the new Call of Duty and Destiny, and this stuff that I've managed to play at conferences for like five and ten minutes, but I never actually got to play it properly, so it was oh, cool. I, yeah, I've been playing... I actually like the new Call of Duty because I've hated it isn't, for years. So. Isn't it brilliant? Yeah. Isn't Advanced Warfare so good? It is. It's like Quake, and that was like it's like one of my favorite games when I was a kid. So, Quake's like, yep. I, I, I'm so glad that when I was able to do that. So it was, it was cool. Hey, we have a question for you. Do you like Call of Duty: World at War? Uh, no, that was when I started hating Call of Duty with wow. passion. Wow. Wow. I don't. You know, I didn't a, like World at War that World much War, either. Like, in four. I mean, I played, I played, I played Call of Duty 2, like that. That was when I really started liking it, and then Call of Duty 4 came out, and that was just, you know, I, that, that sort of changed the way first-person shooters work. And from then on, I, I, I just absolutely hated every first-person shooter. Yeah, once mine. Because if you, ha- if I didn't get it in the first week, every 14-year-old out there that was playing it all day through the summer was hammering me. Oh yeah, I remember I used to get into arguments yeah. at school about Halo and Call of Duty, and I used to get hated on because everyone loves Call of Duty, but yeah, I was a PlayStation guy, so I never really played Halo, but oh. I, I played it on PC. I remember bringing it into school, and it was like we were getting like 15 frames a second, but it didn't matter. We were just playing it. <laughs> we were meant to be doing work, and it was just it was awesome until the teacher came around one day and saw the who's who's the really big black guy in it. Uh, the captain, I forgot his name. Yeah, he was on the screen shouting at me, "You need to buy the full game or something." And my my teacher saw that. That was bad. It was it was not science. It was. <laughs> hmm. So, uh, what games have I been playing recently? I've been playing Numa Breath of Life. That's what I've just been playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very. It is really, really good. I, I, you know, I'm not gonna say a huge amount about it because I need to save everything for the review. But it's brilliant. It really is. Uh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That makes us feel better. Hey, they, they actually enjoyed. They play, they both played the game. And they really enjoyed it. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone says way. Everyone yep. Says, Yay. <laughs> uh, what did you like about it? And what did you did you get stuck at all? Uh, there has been like a few moments where I've got stuck and I've referred to a little bit of help and then I'm like. Oh, do you know I could have I could have figured that out for myself, but uh, so far I'm really liking it, and I'm really liking the script and everything for it. I think it's really really good. Yeah, I mean I mean, there's kind of a few brick walls in there, but one of the things that you know the, the people who are the best at the game, we find that they're the people who don't play Call of Duty and those sort of things. Like I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. terrible at it. Like what you need to do really is methodically go through it, and every time you do something in the game, you need to think about why am I doing this and why am I looking at this in this certain way? What do I think is going to happen if I do this? And yeah. if you think about your actions and your consequences, you really can complete the game a lot quicker than trial and error, if you know what I mean. I trial and error is not a bad way to complete it, but uh, I have this saying that I always tell people, which is uh, if it seems tedious, there's a better way. Yeah. I mean, there'll, there'll be times mm-hmm. in the game you'll be doing something, you'll be taking it forever, and you'll, you'll, you'll think this is, this is ridiculous, but... I promise you, there's a quicker way, an easier way, and a much more fun way. So yeah. <laughs> that's really true, actually, because I've found from what I've played so far. Now I haven't had a huge amount of time to play a whole lot, but from what I've played so far, every bit, like the puzzles, when they seem really, really difficult, they're actually really easy. But you just don't 
realize it at the time until you actually do it and then you're like yeah. that wasn't too bad like there was one bit where you had to kind of move these bookshelves and literally <laughs> yeah. you only had to move one and i was there for ages moving a load of them trying to get them into all different <laughs> places and then i'm like oh wait you only have to remove one <laughs> you know but yeah. yeah yeah it's it's i oh so you did the whole yeah people that's the most painful thing to watch at a conference when people pull out all of the bookcases and it's i don't want to give away a puzzle but yeah 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 it's an easier way <laughs> there's yeah, a puzzle much games easier way are pretty interesting at times yeah but yeah. i'm glad you guys enjoyed it like uh, i it this is kind of the first week where we're or i guess this is a, the second week where yeah. people have actually played it because we've got such a small team and we made it in like six months we didn't really have a lot of time for play testing it was just us playing it and sort of showing friends and just saying what do you think of this and do, do you do you like this puzzle and that sort of thing so we didn't get oh, a lot wow. of time so this is really our first feedback that we're getting other than conferences where we only really showed the first and second level i think once you get through to those later levels they're actually i i mean they're much better despite having less testing on them i just think we learned so much going through the game if you know what i mean and yeah. it, it it's something that I, I, I don't know. I think I think the curve in Numa is so good. The learning curve is really good. I mean, what level are you guys on at the moment? Have you completed it? Uh, well, I'm just on. I've done the prologue and I'm running through the first chapter at the moment. And uh, Tyler doesn't actually have. Yeah, I don't have the game yet. Do you have you got an Xbox One? What? Do you have an Xbox One? Yeah. Oh well, I'll make you I'll make sure we get you another code then. I thought oh. you guys both had. Codes. Awesome. But no, sure I've seen like out. pictures and everything of it. I heard of it. It does look <laughs> awesome and it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I I hope everyone thinks the same. <laughs> but um, I hope everyone picks. I want to get my hands on it. Right. Yeah, no, I'll make I'll make sure you get a code after this. But oh, it, awesome. it's it's a really good game. I think it's about. I mean, if you read between the lines of what Numa's saying and what, and what he's thinking, I I think if you can make it to the end, you and you earn the ending of the game, you really really will enjoy it. It's something that you can't experience in any other medium. I mean, I mean, most games, even like Call of Duty and stuff, can be put into films or books, and they can be the stories can be told that way. But Numa as a story, it can't be in, it can't be in the movies, and it can't be in a book. It has to be played through a video game, and you yeah. won't really understand that until you get to the end. And when you get to the end and see that, I think it's something that, in, when you step back and use your own perspective, you can kind of see like, wow, that was. To a pretty incredible ending, so I hope you guys get there, and I'll, I'll give I'll give you the code, and I hope that you can beat Alan I hope through so the games. Too. You can race now. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll make sure I get my hands on it all until it comes on to launch or whatever. Make sure you get 24 hours of gameplay every day. <laughs> Good, Alan, you better be up for it. Oh yeah, the race is on. I'm gonna finish it first. <laughs> so if you, so have you guys ever seen like a puzzle game like this on Xbox One before, or on a console before, really? Mm, I don't think so, really. No, yeah. like, really haven't. I've never really anything played like anything that. like this. <laughs> I mean, it's it's such a PC specific genre at the moment that I think that was the thing that we saw is there was just such, such a hole in it, that yeah. hole in the hole in the market that we were just like let's. You know, everybody on ID Xbox at the time was making Unity-based platformers and sort of cartoony graphics, if you know what I mean. And we, we've just said, let's make a really shiny UE4 first-person puzzle game. And oh, yeah. You're the first uh, UE4 game on the Xbox One, aren't you? We are the first oh, UE4 wow. game. And we didn't yeah. know that until last week. And neither did Unreal Engine. We didn't, no one had just thought about it. We were just... <laughs> wow. <laughs> everyone was just working... And nobody realized, but that was something cool actually that we turned around and, and then all of a sudden everybody started tweeting that. So it was kind of a big marketing point that we missed out on. Yeah, it's pretty awesome to have a unique game, not in like a first person shooter like you see every day. Like, it's not like a game that you'll see everywhere. No, and I think that's like, I mean, that's good for us. What? There's so many seagulls outside here. We live in the middle of the country. Sorry. We're getting a seagull attack. Okay. Um, no, it's, it's, I mean, us being really different was kind of the whole... I mean, we, we were actually making a, a game similar to a bunch of games on Idea Xbox when we started, when we joined the program. And then about three weeks into that game, we said, 
we don't think this is very good. And I think I think there was it just started off from a joke. We said, huh, we could just switch to Unreal Engine now. And then we all sort of looked at each other and we were like, oh, maybe we should switch to Unreal Engine. And then we decided we'd go for it. And we had this big five, six hour meeting where we just literally sat down and talked about what game we were going to make. And it was really scary because we were we were already on a deadline. We had six months on no money to survive to make this uh-huh. game. And after three weeks, almost a month, we were like, let's pull a 360 and, and do something completely different. So, oh, wow. And they, I, I mean, I don't think it looks like a six-month indie game. No. I, think, I feel I, like it looks like a... It doesn't a much... look like it at all. I was really surprised they're saying six months. I thought this thing would be in, in development yeah, for... to be least, honest, it does not look two, anything like years. an indie game. It looks like a game you would buy a GameStop physically or anything, I mean, really. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like... When I say six months, I mean we spent six months making the game, and then it was done, and we couldn't change anything in the game, and all we were doing was the stuff for like, you know, how achievements work on Xbox Live and getting that stuff working. So the game was finished in six months, and then the artists and stuff started working on other stuff, and we we focused on marketing and all that. So, I, I mean, I personally I don't know how we did it. I, we definitely said we couldn't do it again. <laughs> like, I, I think there was a long time where we were only doing. So we, you know, we were doing ridiculous hours in the studio, and a lot of the guys, you know, we we work 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. in the studio, and then because mm-hmm. we had no jobs or anything or no way of making money, we would work, say, you know, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. in bars, and then back at nine again. So it was oh gosh, you know, it was wow. it was a really tough time. But uh, I think now we're at the end. It's kind of like we'll never do that again, and it's it's something really interesting that that time of our life is over in a way, if you know what I mean, and we're not really as indie anymore, we're a lot more professional about how we yeah. work, and yeah, <laughs> we also discovered never to do all-nighters, we, we did an all-nighter once, and that almost killed us, I don't think we could do that ever again, <laughs> we thought, well, we, we were 21 when we started, and now, although we're 22, I think all of us, we looked at some photos from day one comparing, and we look like we're about 25, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but Still, it was a really good experience, and glad we're at the end now. So, um, this is obviously this is your guys' uh, first game, but uh, how did the studio kind of like start off initially, and how was the ideas of Numa kind of born? Well, like I said, I mean, with Numa, it was we thought the game we were making was crap. Uh, am I allowed to swear on here, by the way? <laughs> you can swear, it's Go fine. Right <laughs> it was really shit, honestly. It was really shit. And uh, <laughs> we were, like, fucking awful. It was bad. But we decided that um, we wanted to make, you know, this wasn't going to get us anywhere. We were going to spend six months making an, at best, average game Why we were wasting our time. So we just decided what's really different and interesting. And we have a great designer who had all these tech demos. He just worked on his spare time. Actually, in Unity, we we made a full-blown tech demo in Unity, and we said, it's going to play like this, but look like UE4. And Xbox said, great, go for it. So we were basically then full-on working on a demo, and then two weeks later, they said, do you want to go to Gamescom and show a game? And we were like, well, we've got a bunch of gray boxes, and that's about it. (laughs) And we said, yeah, sure, we'll we'll get a build for you. We'll make it. So then we almost died trying to make a build for Gamescom. Oh, my God. Oh, we don't, wow. we, you, don't, you don't turn down an opportunity to go to Gamescom. Yeah, it's game. like E3. Like, it's like another E3, basically. Exactly. It's massive. Yeah. But I, I think this, you know, the studio started, it was just... The, the, there's two, two companies working on this game in the same office. There's two programmers and four artists. And we left university and on the Friday... Yeah, we left university on the Friday and started working in a studio that you know, we, we shared an office with this other company... Uh, on the Monday, so we kind of didn't think that what we were getting from university was going to give us a job in games later in life, yeah. and we didn't see many opportunities to just go and work at another company, and we didn't want that. We wanted to make our own yeah. games, yeah. and we just literally left, and on the Monday, we were working in the studio, deciding what game to make, and it was a really fun time for the first month. <laughs> and then the following five, six, seven months were horrible yeah so <laughs> it was fun it was fun tell us 
about the development of Numa Breath of Life, such as the, the the obstacles you guys faced, such as like the time frame you guys had. <laughs> I mean, that time frame is like self inflicted. It was it was like we've got four people that are basically not sleeping and you know living off nothing, and it, it, it was it was more that there was only a certain amount of time you can do this for, and the other guys. Uh, you know, they were paying for the office at the time for us, and uh, we were just, you know, we all we had to do was survive and not die. And um, they were saying like, you know, they they were working. There's just two of them working on the whole game's like code sites, and that's a ridiculously small amount. So they were they're very focused on what they do. So that that always helped us, and I think they were a little bit more mature with it than us with game development. Mm-hmm. And uh, we kind of had to learn for the first sort of month how we work as a team. And one of the reasons the whole game worked and we were able to get it done in such a short time frame was because we worked so well as a team, all, all, all five or six of us. And nobody ever got touchy about criticism and no one really cares when you say, ah, oh, you, you work shit, that, that looks terrible. And <clears throat> I think that, that was why we actually ended up switching to Unreal Engine because we, we showed some stuff from this game we're making about robots in Unity. And then we put it in UE4 just for fun. And our programmers were like, "What? Uh, why does it look so good like there? <laughs> so we were like, well, we can't do that in Unity. That's not us. Like, no. So then we, we ended up switching. But I think with the with the, mild, you know, the, the milestone and the, the short amount of time, that was just we had no choice. It, we wanted to be game developers working on our own games, making a studio. We had to get it done in six months, and we had no choice. So I think when you're faced with that sort of ultimatum of either make a game now, go on to have a chance at making more games in the industry, or go home, get a job at a bar, and fuck off from the games industry, basically. <laughs> There's no way to sort of say it. Other than yeah. That. So, but yeah, I know it was it it was a fun time. I think all of us have sort of grown up over the time. We sort of realized that this is how hard we can work, and this is how badly we want something. And it, it's it's a uh, it's interesting when you kind of have this ultimatum, like there's no middle ground. It's win or lose kind of thing. So uh, what has the feedback from the fans been like, and have they impacted much on the game's development? Um, yeah, massively, really, because we, we, I think Gamescom was the first conference, and there was, there was little things like there was an eye that was sort of, it was like five yards further back than it should have been. Mm-hmm. And we didn't know this at the time, but people were getting stuck, and they, they wouldn't know what to do, and they'd leave the demo and stop playing, and they'd just be like, meh, shit. And... <laughs> They all thought it looked really good, and some people figured it out, but a lot of people didn't know what to do at a certain point. They hadn't learned. We hadn't taught them well enough. But then a month later, we took the game to PAX, yeah. and we addressed the problems that we'd seen people. You know, We didn't really talk to them about it. We just watched them. And we saw people get in trouble with this one eye, and we moved it literally five yards forward, and <laughs> all of a sudden, everybody got it, and everybody wow. loved it. And we were at PAX and I was jet lagged and very tired. And everybody was coming up to me and saying, are you, are you the guy from Numa? Oh my God, I love this game. It's just like Myst. <laughs> and I have, we have no idea what Myst is because we're all born after Myst. So, <laughs> yeah. so none of us have really, we, we, we really don't ever watch videos on it. We've never played it. We've only read the Wikipedia page. And that's because everyone told us it's just like Myst. Which is awesome, like uh, because the, that game sold loads of copies and everybody loved. So, can't wait for that. I hope that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's it, it was. I think we always like pay attention to what people want, but yeah, in a puzzle game, it's kind of hard because you're supposed to get stuck. Yeah, you're yeah. like you're gonna hit a brick. You're it, if it wasn't a case of you getting stuck, you'd just be walking through the game. Yep. Yeah. So you need to get stuck and you need to persevere with it. But I think we've learned a lot from how to make puzzle games. And yeah, it, it's cool. I, I, we definitely learned a lot in this one. And we yeah. think it's a great game. But now we're going to go on to make even better puzzle games. So yeah. it's exciting. 
So it's just like striking that balance as well. Kind yeah, of when exactly. you're making a puzzle game. Yeah, it, it, I think, and that, that's what Portal did so well was it was like it was just this weird combination of a thinking game with a first-person shooter, and mm -hmm. they just struck the balance perfect. So how come you guys chose to do a first-person puzzler instead of a third-person? Uh, probably because of the ending of the game. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Interesting. So I can't say, but uh, you need to watch right. the end. No spoilers. When you get to the end, you will understand. I get, I get to the end. I, I'll work my way to the end as quick as I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to stick with it to get there, but... Once you get there, you've earned the ending, and it, it really is impressive. I, I'm really pleased with the ending. That when I first heard it and saw it written down, what the ending was going to be, I was like, "Wow, that's that's cool. That's something awesome." When I I remember getting the voiceover back actually for the ending, and I was like, "This is the coolest thing. Like, this is a good nice. ending. There there aren't many games that do what we do, and I think there's not really any games that do exactly what we do. Like, it definitely not like." It's difficult to find com comparatives, but yeah, no, if you get to the ending, you'll understand why. <laughs> so uh, this game is 30 days exclusive to Xbox One. So does that mean it'll be coming to other platforms in the future, or will it remain only on Xbox One and Steam? Um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be coming out other places. I, I can't say what exactly, but uh, that's why the 30 days is there. We'll, we'll be exclusive to Xbox for 30 days. Um, we'll be announcing a Steam date very soon in the next couple of days, um, which is really exciting because you know I, I want everybody to be able to play it. And then 30 days after Xbox will be coming out on, in some other places, and that'll, that'll be really fun. So hopefully, just about everybody in the games world will be able to play. Yeah, and experience. nice. So, what was it like developing for the ID at Xbox program? Was it always a plan to go through ID at Xbox, or was Steam initially the main? Uh, platform to make it on. Uh, there wasn't a plan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, it was kind of like we applied to the idea Xbox program and got on, and yeah. then we were like, oh, we got on. Let's, oh, we should actually do this. Like, <laughs> we should go for this. Let's get this I on, think um, mm. exactly. We we were like, you know what? We'll, we'll set up an indie developer and we'll try and make some iPhone games, and probably not make any money, and then go into a different area of work but <laughs> we applied with our old games idea which we, we, it was pretty good at the time but we just thought we could make better so when we applied with our old games idea we got in nice and early and we never just sent them like ideas we sent idea xbox builds with the game and they could play a demo and we sent them a video with us playing the game and talking about what it's going to be like we sent them absolutely everything we could to make them believe that our game's going to get finished at a really good standard. So, you know, it kind of it, it frustrates me personally when we see people complaining that they're not on ID Xbox and where's their free dev kit and that sort of thing. Because we worked tirelessly to make sure that Xbox had everything they need to make an informed decision on who to give dev kits and how mm -hmm. quickly to support people and what priority we made sure we were priority number one for certain people at idea xbox we, we i mean they look at everybody evenly but if we're giving somebody a working build and saying we'll get it on xbox they're going to go with that person over the person that's got a form that they filled out and saying yeah my game might be good if you know what i mean so yeah i, I think like idea xbox has been really good for us definitely it sort of opened doors that were otherwise not there I think if we were a year behind or even like two months behind, things might have gone very differently and Numa might have never happened, which would have been sad. But luckily, they helped us out and we helped them out. And we never, ever relied on Idea Xbox or Xbox to yeah. do our marketing for us. We always made sure that we were focused on marketing. And, you mm -hmm. know, that's 50% of the battle in indie games is getting your game out there. Yeah. So I think by not relying on them and just saying, hey, if you give us Xboxes, we'll do the rest. We just got it done, and when we needed them, we said, can you give us this? And we planned for if they couldn't or if they were too busy. Yeah. And then that meant that we always we were always ready. And when they did come to us saying, yeah, we'll do that for you, like Major Nelson sending out tweets for us, then it was a bonus. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, we, we just sort of made ourselves properly indie and self-sufficient. 
just because it's a self-publishing program doesn't mean that they're meant to help you. They're not your publisher. They yeah. help you self-publish, if you know what I mean. You're, not, you're the publisher. So. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and people, I think they forget that. Like, yeah. Yeah. you're not part of Xbox. You're working with them, if you know what I mean. Yep. Yeah. So they don't owe you anything. They're giving you a gift of two Xboxes and treat it like that, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so that's definitely. What definitely. So uh, what was it like having uh, Jay Britton do the voiceover in Numa, and why did you choose to go with him in the first place? But I do have to say the script is it's great. From what I've played, it's so far it's brilliant. <laughs> it gets better. Like I said, the ending. you got to get to the ending. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, that's Jay's the ending. awesome because um, I know he, he was in a similar situation to us when we started out, and both of us have sort of blossomed as in we've both gone on to awesome things and we're growing. And... Um, when we started out, we were nobodies making a game, and he was sort of nobody make, you know, wanting to get into voice voice acting. And we both got together and we sort of struck a deal where, you know, we we didn't really pay Jay straight away, and he was like, yeah, I just want the experience on Xbox. So we worked something out, and um, he wasn't just like coming to us saying, yeah, I'm a voice actor, I want this amount of money now. He was saying, I want to work with you guys, and I want to make That's a good so cool. character. And when awesome. we asked him for like, when we asked him for a recording, he just said like he did the recording and sent it back to us because he has his own recording studio and he does all his, nice. his audio editing and it's top quality. Well, and good. he came back to us and we were just like, this is the guy, this is him, this is who Numa is. Yeah. And you know we we had we thought about it for a couple of days, but it was just nobody else came. It was there was anywhere near Jay. So. Jay Britton is one of the most professional voice actors. We got contact us, and he wasn't even professional at the time. So I think now he's getting into a situation where he can get jobs a lot from voice acting. I think he's coming up in a film with Adam Sandler, actually. Oh, nice. Nice. So, yeah, he's, he's this doing guy's pretty well now. Pretty well known. That's awesome. Yeah, That's he actually cool. won three awards in um, New York for voice acting and did some commercial with Ford Mustang. and to drive Brilliant. the Mustang from New York but yeah no I think it all started for both of us from that hi we're nobody hi I'm also nobody do you want that's, to be nobody's together awesome. kind of thing it gives you guys a good rep if like but yeah people are like who's this awesome voice act I want to know who he is and someone says hey that's Jay Britton I'm like holy crap that's Jay Britton yeah I hope I hope that's what happens yeah that guy it will happen yeah. <laughs> we'll see so you guys showed Numa at Gamescom. You guys went to PAX. Are there any other future events you guys plan on going to, uh, like PAX East, like the Comic Cons, or like small conventions? Yeah, man. We're, um, I'm going to GDC on Thursday. I'm flying out. Nice. Uh, and nice. then on the 4th, I think. Yeah, no, on the 5th. So a little bit early from GDC, I'm flying over to PAX East, and I'll oh, be there the whole I time. I go this year. I would have went this year, but I couldn't get tickets on time. Ah... Uh, what, what are you are you Boston based or? I'm in New York, but I went for the oh, past two years. Oh man, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm, we're showing at PAX East this year, and we've got a full build of the game, a finished build. We're on the Xbox booth, so that'll be really fun. Those guys. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, PAX East can be rocking this year. Yeah, I, th I think we're actually only one of two idea Xbox games, which is kind of sad, but. I mean, really? it's, wow. It's, it's cool that we got to be one of the two, yeah, but it's really like, good. It's always fun seeing them there because. There's loads of, of there's a good variety. Whereas often you'll get like, yeah, Forza taking up like yeah. thirty spaces. Yeah, yeah. Spaces. Right. Like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Titanfall is taking up most of the booth. Project exactly. Yeah. yeah. Whereas with with the ID Xbox booth, you've maybe got eight different games in one place. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, it's it's cool. We're gonna be one of two, and you know, there's a bunch of people that really want to come play the game there, and I'll be there, you know, speaking to people about it and. Our game actually comes out, I think it's four days before, so it could be very depressing or very fun, depending yeah, on how yeah, day you, one goes. Yeah, what do you guys plan on the reactions of people that play at conventions and stuff? Like, what do you think they will be, and what have they been at the past conventions you showed the game at? Um, <laughs> Americans seem to love it more than other people, <laughs> so that's good. but... Um, because that's like seventy five percent of our market, so that's good for us. Yeah, uh, really good. I, I think kids. <laughs> British people like 
Yeah. British <laughs> people seem to like sneer at it a bit. Like at the start, they're like, "Oh, he's annoying," but <laughs> but as they get through it, they realize like that's a character he's playing, and it we want him to do that to you a little bit. Like he he's meant to be kind of frustrating at the start. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when you get to the end, you'll understand why. And um, yeah, I think people's reactions, overall reactions to the game are almost always positive. I think it's refreshing for them to see such a game like this on Xbox. And it, it, it's refreshing for them to see something that isn't FIFA, Call of Duty, That's it. or yeah. mocks of those games. Setting like so, a new like, thing in the gaming world. like Exactly. A new icon. I, yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think the best part is when you see somebody stuck on a puzzle and not leaving the booth. As in, I, I saw this this guy stuck on one puzzle, and I knew the answer. I, I'm sick of seeing the puzzle, but he sat there for 20 minutes <laughs> playing it, and then he figures it out. And you have that moment where they go like, "Ah, I got it," and their fate they smile with like this, like pleased with themselves that they completed it, relief that they don't have to look at it anymore. And I'm there like my ears are bleeding because I want to tell them what to do. But it, it them, it's man. so cool just like <laughs> to see that to see them like figure it out but yeah. not leave despite being frustrated by this brick wall they spend the time thinking about it and that's something like that not a lot of games do so yeah, yeah. So. so uh you guys are making the documentary called uh, we made a game uh, tell us about that and when will we be able to see it oh yeah, yeah he, he was just here filming now actually when we started so <laughs> who's it being filmed <laughs> by yeah it's filmed by a guy called Rob, and he runs a company called Untraditional Productions. And the documentary has followed us from day one until now, and it keeps following us. Nice. So, I we did a <laughs> Kickstarter for that, and you know that it just that helped out a lot. And I think I think it was worth, you know, the the exact money that went into the Kickstarter. It was definitely worth the documentary because it covers like so much of the development period, and it's such like a real accurate portrayal of what it's like making indie games and having nothing if you know what I mean like putting everything on the line yeah and I think it, it, I mean we, we don't know the exact date when it'll come out because uh, we have to see what we're filming like it, it, I mean it's gonna be we're gonna be done with filming very soon because the release date's coming up but yeah. It's we definitely have, we have a trailer now which is not released yet but it's coming up very nice. soon, nice. Um, and it's really good. I'm really pleased with it. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's su it's super fun to watch. I think um, it's it's funny <laughs> just to watch us, but it's also like when you, it's it's kind of emotional for us to watch it because it's we you, we've visually aged so yeah. much. <laughs> it's just <laughs> horrible, but it's it's funny to watch for us. For us. Like, I, I think people get, even if it, at the end we'll see how much footage we actually have, and we don't know yet if it's going to be an hour and a half long, or if it's going to be 30 minutes long, because we don't know what's worth watching, if you know what I mean, yeah. because we didn't have any arguments or anything, there was no drama, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> there was nothing funny like that, it was all about TV. making a game, and there's yeah. only so much, like, code you can video someone doing before it's like, okay, you're just watching me <laughs> write lines of code, so, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> It's it'll be weird, but I think whatever it is, even if it was fifteen minutes, should, well, I don't think it will be. But even if it was fifteen minutes, it would be a good fifteen minutes, and it'd be worth you know a fifteen minute watch. So definitely, yeah, definitely, I'll be watching that. I love that. I'll watch it too. Yeah, we'll it's I'll watch it too. That's that's really good. That you know people can just see this without yeah. even needing to pay or anything. Uh huh. Just we'll be on Xbox so Video. Uh, I can't confirm that yet. I, it's something we're talking about, but they're they're very specific about what they put on there. So. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. I think they should stick it on Xbox. Video, yeah. You know, promote I it. Think they should do, but <laughs> get it on that. Yeah, get it on that Xbox homepage and yeah. promote and stuff. But um, it'll be available for free anyway, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Nice. Yeah. Be nice. Me. Just everywhere on the internet. We'll have a website up very soon, actually. So just watch oh, out for the next week or so. That's brilliant. Joe might get an article up on it as well. I have a question. Um, Shoot. When you guys go to PAX East, for the viewers that are listening, um, will you guys be giving anything away? Like, uh, I don't know, like swag or anything related to the game? 
I don't know, like <laughs> companies usually do. Yeah, companies do, but we're like twenty-two year olds that have no money yet. You if you buy the game, if everyone buys the game, then we'll bring some swag. But otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> um, we might have a couple of the codes of the game we'll give away and that sort of thing. But it's not, not really like to hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> he's 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 busy. Yeah, but... I know. <laughs> we, we always get the uh, we always get the Xbox stuff. They always make sure we've got. I think my wardrobe is basically Xbox T-shirt. In fact, I'm wearing an idea Xbox T-shirt right, right now. <laughs> Every day we wear different clothes. I'm wearing my Xbox One T-shirt right now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I think, yeah. I mean, after all the conferences, I, I always tweeted a photo, and I think I laid out all of the clothes I stole slash got on my bed, and it was, <laughs> it was how many clothes I got. I had like 13 Xbox One T-shirts, and there's only so many times you can wear an Xbox One T-shirt in a week. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was... Well, at least you'll always have a t-shirt to wear. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what happens. Yeah, but it's always the same one. People think I don't wash, but I just genuinely have that many Xbox One t-shirts. It's awesome, though. Yeah, my fiance doesn't think so. At family oh. parties, when I'm wearing an Xbox t-shirt, it's not so... If you give her one, she'll probably yeah. appreciate it. She's probably jealous. <laughs> she knows. She's got, she's got, like, the other half. Oh, so. my God. <laughs> <laughs> She just doesn't wear them in public. That's the difference. Uh, uh. <laughs> so anyway, so I guess that's it. Yeah. Um, so Numa launches on February twenty seventh. First on Xbox One for thirty days. Um, we'll have our review that same day on www.rectifygaming.com. But um, thanks for joining us, Joe. Thank you no so worries, much. Man. Thanks for asking me loads of awesome questions. <laughs> yeah, um, awesome questions. I'll make sure you get a code then, yeah? Yeah, man, I'll be versing out and talking to the <laughs> fucking job. You have, to see who, you have to put that in the review, see who finished first, because I need to know. So oh, now, all right, now it's on. I'll stick to... Now it's on. I guess I'll I'll got a head start, review. but... <laughs> all right. All right, thanks a lot, guys. No problem. All right, thank you. Uh, this was... Episode 7 of the Rectify Gaming Podcast with Numa Breath of Life developer Joe Brammer. Um, so, congrats to Joe on the launch and the rest of the team. And, uh, see you later. Mm-hmm.